Hello, Happy New Year. I'm George, welcome to my channel. Today I'm here in Itapechininga in the Sao Paulo district of Brazil. So out in the countryside. And I really like the scenery around here. A lot of different trees that I'm not used to seeing. Yeah, so I, I'm just gonna find, try and find a spot to paint. We're sort of on the outside of the city at the moment. And I want to find a spot which just looks nice really. I'm not going to paint anything which is particularly famous or iconic. Um, I'm just going to try and find a nice scene. I want to get some of the, the nature, so there's some of the trees and some of these houses with this red colour to them, uh, the sort of red orangey roofs. As you can see in front of us, quite a lot of nature. It's nice and warm. Uh, I've been bitten all over, everywhere. Everything in Brazil bites you. The mosquitoes, the ants, the spiders, so you have to watch out for all of that. And I'm feeling uh, quite itchy from all the bites I've taken. Um, but yeah, other than that, I'm enjoying the climate. It's quite hot, quite humid, but not scorching hot, so hopefully I won't get burnt. But anyway, let's find this spot to paint. So I found this spot behind me. Um, I really like just how the trees are framing the houses. And this area is called Shakira Going, so it's a small community um, and there's lots of different families which live in these houses. I like how the scene shows that mix of nature um, and the people living in Brazil. So let's get into this painting. So here I've just applied a rough grid to the board that I'm painting on, dividing it into ninths. I find this really helps uh, keep control of the composition in the early stages, as you can use these vertical and horizontal lines to map points of the painting, so you can check what lines up with what. Um, so I've done this quickly just using raw umber paint, and now I'm sketching in the big overall shapes of the composition. As it's quite a complex scene that I'm painting, I'm trying to mass in the big, broad, general shapes of all the different areas and the rough, approximate colour as well. And to do this, I'm just using very thin down paint and just lightly rubbing it into my board. As the board is light in colour and value, it also adds a vibrancy to the paint as some of this brightness shines through, allowing me to use slightly purer pigments. Another thing as well when painting outdoors, especially in a country like Brazil, which is tropical, so it rains a lot and therefore the foliage is very bright, vibrant green. And although I do really love being surrounded by green foliage, and I even consider green to be my favourite colour, it is a colour which doesn't always translate well to paintings. Uh, there is a saying that green covers never sell, and I've heard as far as paintings selling purely on colour, that green paintings sell the worst and red paintings actually sell the best. However, that doesn't mean that you can't make a nice painting with a lot of green. There are paintings I really like which have a great variety of different greens. However, it is a colour that we should handle with care, as you don't want your painting to be completely dominated by green. So my advice when painting a scene with a lot of green is actually to try and look for areas which aren't green or if they are green to try and pick out some variety in the green, push some greens closer to yellow, some greens closer to blue and then also to try and find a few complementary colours which is why these orange rooftops of the houses work really nicely as they as they suddenly bring a lot more colour into the paint and instead of it just being a sea of green it's got some nice bright chromatic oranges which look even more vibrant as they're surrounded by cool greens. And as I go I start to get a bit more specific with certain areas using a quite a small filbert brush to pick out some of the darker accents within the trees and within the windows of the houses. One thing that I'm doing a lot whilst I paint is trying to simplify the details in most areas of the painting. 
I'm just trying to paint the broad visual impression at this stage, similar to what I see when I squint. I'm not trying to paint every blade of grass or every leaf on the trees, as often too much detail can be distracting and take away from the focal point of the painting, which in this case is the house on the left. Also a lot of people try to add a lot of detail to make the painting more realistic, when in fact the things which is going to make your painting really realistic is the value relationships, how accurate are the areas of light and dark in relation to each other, and also the overall drawing of the scene, the perspective of the scene, does the things make sense visually. So often when people try and add a lot of details, especially the really small details, the naughty bits as one of my art tutors used to say, it can often have the opposite effect as when the human eye looks at a scene, the only area of sharp detail that we see is the area where the eye is focused on, not the whole scene in general. However, when we paint from life, there is a tendency to paint every area in detail and sharp focus. As, as we look at the area of the scene that we're painting, we focus on that area and we see that area in sharp detail in a higher definition than we would if we were to look at the scene overall or if we were to look at the focal point, that area where we want people to look at on our painting. So it's important to try and control the, the detail and the edges and the sharpness or softness of certain areas in the painting as if everywhere in the painting is sharp it's going to be quite distracting and the viewer won't necessarily know where to look. Also, another reason I'm trying not to paint too many small details, um, I'm trying to keep the areas still quite, um, as quite broad areas or soft transitions rather than lots of tiny specks of grass, is so when you're painting outdoors, especially on a small scale like this, it's going to take me forever to paint every blade of grass or every leaf on the tree when you can simply just paint a section of the area and then paint a few edges where that area transitions into the other area, pick out a few sections of detail and the human eye can fill in the rest of the area and often if the values are right, if, if the transitions are accurate or slightly soft and accurate, then the viewer's eye will just fill it in as appearing to be real. Well, as I paint these trees behind the houses, I'm viewing them almost as silhouettes. So I'm keeping the details in the bulk of the tree quite simple and the values very unified. However, where the tree ends and meets the sky, I am paying close attention in uh, the details to this particular area. For example, I am picking out some of the more specific shapes of the leaves and a few areas where the sky is breaking through the tree and some areas where I'm using quite a bit of medium on my brush just to paint some fine branches connecting these bulks of leaves. By being accurate with these edges, these areas of high contrast between the tree and the sky, it's going to give the impression of a tree bristling with leaves without me having to paint every single leaf on that tree. And as I continue resolving the painting, uh, bringing some areas to a finish, I am loading my brush with thicker paint and painting on top of some of these areas that I applied that thin wash to. And I'm applying the thicker paint especially in areas that are light as keeping the darks quite thin tends to help them recede and helps them appear dark as when you paint thick paint down it has a tendency to catch the light and actually create a slightly more textured and lighter effect whereas keeping the darks quite thin and quite flat it just helps them recede however there are areas where I've applied the darks quite thickly using a mix of my 
permanent green and alizarin crimson as I'm not using any black on my palette but if I mix these two together I get a really nice deep dark and some of the areas where I've applied the paint quite thickly in the darks are the small dark accents which I've painted on top of a light area such as uh, the window on the house or that area where the door is on the house and a few areas on the trees as well where I have applied a bit of uh, dark paint quite thickly although in the general broader areas the dark paint is quite thin and some areas as well in the lights I've kept the paint quite thin such as in the grass in the foreground as by glazing the green over the light colour of the panel it's created quite an accurate representation of that value in that area of the grass so for that reason I'm just leaving it as it is and I will pick out a few areas, a few blades of grass in, a, in some areas with a bit of thicker paint and that will create the illusion of a realistic patch of grass. So I hope you enjoyed that video of me painting here in Ita Pechininga. Um, I got to meet some of the people who live in these houses. So it's the whole um, uh, area is owned by one family who's lived there for over a hundred years and they were really, really nice. They came, they gave me some bananas, they gave me some water, they gave me some chocolate. Um, just really nice people. So that always makes it more enjoyable when you're painting. Uh, I have been bitten a lot by a lot of insects and also one thing is always remember to bring your hat because it was so overcast in the morning i thought i probably don't need the hat um but it turns out i probably did because i'm probably going to be a bit burnt i did put sun cream on but i probably will be burnt anyway um so my top tips bring a hat bring sun cream and keep putting it on whilst you're painting if you enjoyed that video then please subscribe to the channel and give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.